I will record this session. It's being recorded right now. And uh, you'll be able to view it again later on in case you miss something. So if you are, you know, snacking <coughs> instead of taking notes, that's totally okay. You can watch it, the replay once again. So I want to introduce to you our speaker for today, Catherine McCord. Catherine is a connection of a connection of a connection. I don't even know <laughs> how we met, <laughs> but I'm so, so very glad that uh, we did connect and we had a conversation. Catherine has been fascinated with recruiting since childhood. And I know that's a big obstacle for us as business owners trying to recruit, bring in more talent, hiring people, and having them be responsible when they get there as well. So Catherine has a very strong experience in recruiting from customer service right on through CFOs. And she has a background in process improvement, growing employee satisfaction. So she went out and she founded a company called Titan in 2014. And Titan is awesome because it takes out all of the assumptions from a resume, from people applying online. So it's a revolutionary patent pending applicant tracking software that removes biases and fires from the resume. I've been waiting so long for this, <laughs> which is awesome. So spread the word, tell everybody. And she's gonna tell us a little bit about how we can implement some of those processes into our business, whether it is a small business, a medium business, or a large business in this area. We have a variety of people on the call today and more joining us, and that's going to help greatly. Okay, so take it away, Catherine. Good afternoon, everybody. Again, if you didn't hear, my name is Catherine McCord. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and my background. So I actually started, first of all, she's right. I've been in, uh, I've been into recruiting and fascinated by it since I was a child, because that's what my mother did. I was that little girl that would make my mother fill out applications and come interview with me. I didn't always hire her, which is kind of messed up. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I played convention and that kind of thing. So I, but you could say my mother kind of groomed me from the time I was, I was very young. Um, as I got older, I, I spent a lot of my career helping entrepreneurs get their businesses off the ground for years. Then I got into, uh, got into technical recruiting for a while, all well and good, but doing just it was kind of boring for me. Uh, so I got out of that. I started, plus I didn't like how, a lot of candidates and clients were being treated in the industry in, in general. So I struck out and did it on my own. So in 2014, I opened up my own recruiting and consulting firm, Titan Management. Been around now since 2014. Um, it's been wonderful, uh, absolutely an adventure. I help clients all over the country. I love what I do. Um, and then because there is such a need for better technology on the recruiting and HR front, I did start uh, the Titan ATS last year. It is actually, it's out and running now. We are doing some additional rollouts. We're going to be in Web Summit in Portugal later this year. Very, very excited about that. Um, and I do a lot. And it has a great DEI component and all that, uh, but I'm not going to do a commercial, I promise. Uh, but then I also do speaking engagements and things like that, including for SHRM events. So uh, which I'm actually really surprised by the way that Sherm wants me to speak because <laughs> I'm a little more, um, a little bit more uh, flamboyant than some of their, their, than most of their speakers, but they, they've kind of started running with it. So I'm excited about that. So that's a little bit about me and my background. And I want to let you know that um, if any of you at any point have a question, pop it in the chat or just take yourself off mute and speak up. Okay. I, I want you to ask questions. I want to help you. That's the whole point of this. I'm not here to just yammer at you. Okay. So if you have questions, thoughts, concerns, anything like that, please feel free to share them with me. Um, I will also let you know, I'm just getting over a crazy flu. So if I cough at you, I'm very sorry. And if you see me checking my notes, it's because normally I can do this from memory, but my brain's still a little funky from being sick. So um, first of all, Thank you all for coming and being here with me. And I'm just going to kind of dive right on in here. Okay. So we're going to be talking about effective hiring for diversity, 
just in general and also post COVID. So we're going to kind of roll it all into one subject. Um, and just so that you guys know, I, I live and breathe and research for this stuff. Okay. I'm constantly researching, constantly finding all the studies. Um, I'm very careful about what sources I use. If any of you have questions about where I get some information, I'll, I usually cite, but if I forget, feel free to ask. Okay. So as you're hiring, a lot of people don't realize that recruiting the right people starts way before you ever start the hire process with employer branding. Okay, this is huge. Recently, I was called upon to do sort of an audit, not exactly, but sort of an audit of um, a, a job page for a major hospital system. And I got on and, you know, I gave them my notes on that. And I said, where's all this beautiful work you've been doing with diversity for years? Where is that? And they go, what do you mean? And I said, well, you're way ahead of the curve on all this. Where is it? I see it literally nowhere, not in your social media, not in your website. Where is this stuff? This is huge. This would get you so many people. No clue. This company that is so far ahead of the curve and doing so many beautiful things with diversity, you would have never known. And by the way, they're in a certain area that the, it, it would be a big deal, okay? It's not, it's diver, the diversity aspect is not as common there. So it would really attract a lot of talent, especially since they're trying to pull from out of area. So start with your employer branding. Stop and think, okay, what, how do I best convey who I, who we are as a company? And you have to do that on your website, on your LinkedIn, on, on your, I mean, your company's LinkedIn, just to be real clear here, your company's LinkedIn, your company's Facebook, your company's, I don't know, Twitter, Instagram, whatever else you have. It needs to showcase who you are and what makes you unique as a company. Do not just sell stuff on social media. I'm going to repeat that. Do not just sell on social media. That is a huge mistake. A, from a sales standpoint, actually, but that's a whole other speech. B, as an employer branding, for employer branding perspective. Mm -mm. The ratio I put actually in a study guide, which will either will be or has been emailed to you, I'm not sure which, mm -hmm. um, but post three to four times a week, minimum, okay? You want to try to post a little bit more than that, but at least three to four. And the minimum ratio is a one to four. So you want to give four times and then ask once. So for every four posts for your, I don't, you know, giving facts, you know, giving some unique information out, um, posting about something exciting going on in the company, posting a funny Friday meme, you know, that counts too. For every four that you're giving, then you can ask and sell. And that really sets the tone for your company culture and what, you know, and how other people are going to perceive you. Okay, so it's very, very important. So make sure that that message is getting out there. Make sure that what makes you unique, and don't say the generic stuff, okay? Everybody goes, we're like a family. You and every other company seems to think that, okay? <laughs> show people, show them photos of, you know, hey, so-and-so had this great accomplishment, woohoo! By the way, the other thing that you just told them other than more about what you do there is we celebrate our employees. We uplift our people. We will call, call you out in a good way and say, yeah, look at this person, put you in the spotlight. That's huge. So use that employer branding. That's an absolutely important, important method of, of recruitment. Part of that is also your online reviews, whether it's customers or Glassdoor and Indeed. Does anybody have a guess how often you should be checking your online brand, your online reputation, excuse me. Anybody have any idea? Anyone? Anybody? Once a week. Oh, that is exactly right. You know, nobody's ever got it right before. Good job. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Gold star for you. All right. And I, by the way, I asked that a lot. If you were the first person to get that right. So good for you. Um, I've gotten crazy answers like twice a day, which is way too often. <laughs> I've gotten, 
oh, I don't know, once a month, once a year, but no, once a week is correct. Uh, once a week is how often you need to be checking, especially while you're hiring, but really anytime, checking your online presence. So Google yourselves, Google your company name, Google with reviews, Google, uh, and then always try to Google something negative, look up like complaints or look up uh, issues or concerns or something like that after your company name, see if anything pops up. Some, because some job seekers are actually pretty darn savvy and they'll really get, especially if you're hiring anybody in IT, you really got to dig. In fact, if you, if you have an actual IT department, it is also smart while HR slash, you know, entrepreneurs ought to be doing that too. If you have IT professionals, have one of them do it as well so that they can kind of look into it a little bit more in depth than, than you would be able to typically. Also your community presence is really important. A lot of people underestimate that too, okay? A company needs to be involved in their community, period. I don't care how small you are. My company is very small. We only have a few of us, but we still get out there and we'll do beach cleanup. I live by the beach in South Florida, by the way, guys. Um, so I go out there and I, I do beach, you know, I do beach cleanup. My team does some cleanup wherever they are. I have a person out in Portland, Oregon. She does some, you know, nature, like clean up nature trails. We uh, go to charity events. We get out and network, that kind of thing. It's very, very important, especially if you're a smaller organization, to have a big presence in your community. If you're not doing that, you are missing out. And believe me, there's networking everywhere. Unless you're, you know, in the hills of, of, of Montana or something, okay, or in the wilderness in Alaska, there is networking near you, I promise, even right now. So get out there, network, 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 network. Um, also, if right now you are not comfortable going to in-person events, I completely and totally understand. There are wonderful online networking groups that are actually good. Some of them are me, but some are really good. Um, if you... If you don't mind people who, how do I say this? I'm just going to say it, who cuss like sailors, um, but are really super awesome professionals and will really help you get business, check out Success Champions Networking. Um, they have a really unique format. They'll teach you things. Like they actually have experts come in and give classes. They really do refer each other business. They've had really big contracts made. It's a really cool organization. Um, and if you don't see a chapter listed, uh, on their site that's near you, still reach out to the to the president, Donnie Boivin. That is D-O-N-N-I-E, uh, B-O-I-V-I-N. He also has a podcast and all that kind of stuff, but reach out to him directly and he will set you up with a chapter until there's one local for you. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that group as well as any others kind of like it. All right. Any questions on any of that? Any questions on employer branding, why that's important, what you can do, any of that? No. Okay. Oh, real quick side note. Do not post anything political. Don't do it. Nobody's I done that. <laughs> well, here anyway. I don't know about uh, online. No, not anywhere. Or, uh, no, I don't care where you media. are. I don't care if you think that you're with everybody. I don't care. And the number one thing I've heard, well, if somebody doesn't agree with my politics, I don't want them. First of all, we're going to get, oh, Donnie's group name in the chat. Yeah, sure. I'll drop that real quick. Hold on one second. Let me do that before I forget because I will forget you guys. Hold on one second. Come on, Catherine. You're going to forget about us. I do. I will totally forget everything. I will. Success you know, everything champion. that you said sounds like what I teach to job seekers about branding and, um, Paying it forward and networking, yes. googling yes. yourself for those negative comments and, and that yep. kind of thing. Don't do Are it. Are you saying it has a lot to do with businesses as well? Oh my gosh, yes. And actually, this part of it, you're absolutely right. And I teach that too, and I talk to job seekers, is almost identical. This part of the teaching is almost identical because it's because you also have to have personal brand, and I teach all of that. I'm sure you do as well. So. This is this part is almost identical in that way, but it's very important. And one thing that a lot of people don't know about LinkedIn is that we can see every comment that you make, every like that you do. So you personally, if you and people in your company need to be very careful what they're liking, 
what they are commenting on and all that on LinkedIn, because everyone can see everything that you do. So be very, very careful with that. It is not like Facebook in that way. LinkedIn is extremely public and it is designed to be. So, and that, and there is no customer service to LinkedIn, doesn't exist. So it's not like you can get help if you accidentally do something or whatever. Just, just don't, just be if super, If you need super help with LinkedIn, you should go to Twitter and tweet LinkedIn and they'll get back to you. Sometimes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, or if you're me, you just get some of your loudmouth friends to, to help you blast yes. them and then publicly, yes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they get back to you. Um, <laughs> but it's, um, it's really important. And, and I have a lot of people say, well, if somebody doesn't share my politics. I don't want them. We're going to get into exactly why that's wrong in a little bit, <laughs> but let me just tell you that is not correct. Okay. You want different you want alternate. And even if somebody agrees with you, sometimes they don't appreciate how loud you're, how aggressive you are about something. They're like, ugh, why are they saying that like that? That's so unattractive. You just never know how something's going to come across. So just don't, just don't go there. You know, do whatever you want on Facebook, you know, knock yourself out, but leave that stuff off LinkedIn and your, and your company brand. That's, that's not attractive. All right. So the next, the next kind of step is planning your scale up. So a lot of a lot of companies and HR and all that make this mistake of, oh, we have some work that needs to be done. Let's just jump right into hiring. No. First of all, before you ever need to hire, you should be able to anticipate approximately when that next hire is going to need to come. So you need to sit down right now, today, and go, okay, what do we have going on? What do we know is coming up? Where is everybody's work level now? And kind of start to figure out where you're going to need to make your next hire. Figure out how much that is going to cost you. We're going to get into how to figure that out, that out in just a minute. Get into like, how long do I think it'll actually take me to get somebody in the door? So how far out do we need to plan? You don't want to hire when you're desperate. That is the wrong time to hire. Everything bad comes from that everything. So you need to be prepped and be able to go, okay, we're coming into having a need. Now let's start working on hiring. That's how you do it. Because you want to start ideally a month or two, depending on the type of role, uh, a month or two before you actually need the person in the chair. That's what you should be doing. Now, if somebody gives you a two-week notice, obviously you've just got to kind of you know, start it, but you start on day one. Don't wait until they're out the door to start trying to hire their replacement. Start day one. Also ask them for recommendations if they've had a pleasant work experience with you, that type of thing. So start planning from day one. Um, you also want to think, do we necessarily need somebody or is there a way to just streamline things and save, save money, especially if you're an entrepreneur? Not so much for HR and like in large companies and things like that. But if you're working with a smaller organization, budget is so crucial. Okay. I've been working in this for well over a decade. I know this in and out. That budget is, and especially when it's your own money, it, you take it so personally. And I always have, to, I always have to explain that to salespeople when they call me and they're trying to get me to buy something. I go, you have to understand this is my money. <laughs> you're not asking me to spend somebody else's money. This is my personal money, my money. <laughs> You know, this matters to me and this company is my baby. It's everything to me. So it's, it's a very different prospect. So you have to put that kind of at the forefront, especially with little, with smaller companies, even if you're not itty bitty, but if you know, you're a hundred people or less, that type of thing, be very, very mindful. Think, can I just get a contractor, you know, to, to do this for 10, 20 hours and save ourselves all the payroll expense and the benefits and all that kind of stuff. Can we save some money that way? Um, can I send it offshore? Is this something I'm comfortable sending offshore because it's you know not really that difficult or it's just something that it doesn't really matter where or who the person is. They can do that. Save yourself a lot of money that way. Look into alternative options first. The other thing is don't hire a full-time person if you only have part-time work. So if you're going to hire a part-time person, have it, you know, 15 to 20 hours of work, like actual sit down work, not, oh, we'll come up with stuff for them to do. You can sit down and map out 15 to 20 hours of actual sit down work for them. Now you have need for a part-time person with a full-time person. 
at least 32 hours a week where you can actually map out. It will take them this long to do this, this long to do this, this long to do this. There's 32 hours. We'll figure out the other eight or, you know, meetings and things like that, you know, things like that come up. So 32 hours plus, then you're ready to hire a full-time person. Not until then. Okay. That's not a thing. So make sure that you are getting the right level of person. Make sure that you are getting the right type of position. Does and I want to talk about at this point the difference between contractors and W2. Okay. Why you should maybe go with one over the other and what the difference is. So does any who here thinks that you can make any position contractor that you want? Anybody? The answer is absolutely not. Just because you want a position to be contract does not mean that it can be. There are regulations for these types of things. I'm not going to sit here and go through every little teeny tiny one, but let me give you a few of the tips. If you are giving the person a schedule, they are not able to be contract. That is a W-2 person. If you are telling them how to do their job, not, and I don't mean micromanaging, okay? I'm just saying if you're giving specific guidelines as to how it needs to be done, that person is W-2, not 1099. If you are training them on anything other than your product, they are W-2, not 1099. So just because you, and oh, and, and commission only, that has nothing to do with 1099 or W-2. You can have W-2 commission only, okay? But it's just... The structure is more about how they are treated. An independent contractor, all that matters is the results. If they can do it in two hours a week, you're still going to pay them the same, essentially, okay? Um, there, now, there are certain ways, there are certain times that it would be hourly with a contractor. I don't recommend that for anybody that's not a big, a big company that gets real dicey and you want a legal team to tell you that you're right on that. So if you're going to hire out a contractor, flat rate pay for results, and you can have bonuses and commissions and all that, that's fine. But be very, very careful with the W-2 to 99. Um, contractors are great uh, if it's a, an IT person, great for contract work in a lot of cases because they're already experts. There are virtual, some, some virtual assistants, some not. I prefer to stay away from that, but there are some virtual assistants that can be hired on a contract basis. Those people are already established for that and they'll help you keep those guidelines in tow. So look for someone who's already established doing that if that's what you want to do. Recruiters are great to hire. And I'm not talking about HR. Recruiters are great to hire on a contract basis because it's very clear. I need a person. Bam. That's it. It's very cut and dry. So these are kind of some of the guidelines. It's very important to keep that in tow. Very, very important. And I've had people go, well, what happens if you miscategorize? Or what if I just want to do whatever I want to do? Or my industry does it this way, so this is what I'm going to do. Let me tell you what can happen because I've actually seen it happen. One day, this organization called Wage and Hour will come into your organization because someone got mad at you or they just decided to audit you randomly. And they're going to sit down and go through years of your business, possibly all the way back to the beginning, just depending on their mood. And they're going to make you cut tens of thousands of dollars of checks on the spot in back pay, uh, would have been benefits. And then, oh, on top of that, you're going to have a whole bunch of fines. We and actually they, just had that uh, situation happen. I don't know if you all read the headlines, but uh, Wage and Hour did send in around 20 people of Wage and Hour employees to a business in North Jersey, and they did exactly that. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a very real thing. I've actually seen it multiple times. Uh, one of my favorite threats to organizations that are shady is to call Wage and Hour on them, because if they know what that is, they get pretty scared. Um, and it can shut down your business and they don't play, by the way, if you can't, if you can't cut those checks on the spot, they can, they can basically bankrupt you. They can also sometimes haul you to jail, depending on the exact circumstances. So you, I mean, on the spot, they're going to make you sit there and write the checks. 
So, so when you do right. a job description um, and you're outlining um, soup to does everything you want, are you putting that in the job description, whether they're a 1099 freelancer or gig worker? Um, I only, you? so I specify if it's 10, if it's 1099, if I'm looking for a contractor, I just specify that. Otherwise I just specify it's a full-time role. People know what that means. Mm -hmm. That's, that's just kind of how it, people, unless you say contractor, people will assume W2. Okay. So that's kind of how I, I structure that. Um, the other thing too, is you want to create, so, so you've, you know, you've determined, yes, I actually do need a person. This is the classification they're going to be. So then it's going to be, can I afford to hire? <laughs> and you have to, you have to consider all costs. So the cost of employment taxes, the cost of benefits, the cost of, you know, PTO, what PTO will be mean for you, all these kinds of things. Um, some, some companies, depending on your organization, you might have to have special insurance. You might have to have work, workman's comp, that type of thing. So make sure you consider everything. And we're going to, we're going to go into compensation a little bit more in just a second, but you need to go ahead and be considering these types of things. So, oh, and one thing I will tell you, you need to have at least a couple of months of the person's pay sitting in the bank before you bring them on. Don't bring someone on when you don't have enough to float their payroll for at least a couple of months if nothing else comes in the door. Because let me tell you, sometimes weird stuff like this COVID virus happens and sends everything for a loop and you need to be prepared. Okay, it's not because there were actually companies that their employees did the work and then they couldn't pay them. So that's not okay. So you need to always have that there as your little safety net, just in case something happens. And thank you to whoever just had to jump off. I couldn't quite read the name when it popped up, but um, sorry, you had to leave early, but uh, thank you for coming. We'll send the study guide out. Um, take, make sure you have the time to train, plan for that, plan for the training, have training materials created, that type of thing. Have everything planned out before you start the process. Any questions on any of that before I go on? I think that uh, most of our businesses on the call have that pretty covered, not, not like planning ahead. Um, maybe some do, but uh, this whole social media branding thing is probably new to a lot of our um People oh yeah. <laughs> and social media is easy guys, by the way, you can hop, you can have somebody hop on Snappa, which is this great. I'm going to put that in the chat for you real quick. Hold on. Cause it's super cheap. It's $15 a month. They have beautiful, um, templates on there and you can basically just find yourself, you know, kind of create like in your mind, like the verbiage or whatever that you want, go through a bunch of awesome photos that they have that you can just fill out the template. It will look completely professional and beautiful and post that on there. It'll look great. Everybody will think that you have some marketing genius doing it. It's not complicated. <laughs> okay. Um, if you want help kind of making a marketing strategy, I know some people that could do that for you really cheap, just kind of lay a basic one out, just a very basic format to follow out. And then you just follow that from then on easy peasy. So feel free to reach out to me directly if you want a recommendation there. And I will so, uh, include that in uh, the uh, URL link and everything for replays so that you can reach out to Catherine to get some more information. Yes. And feel free, by the way, guys, to connect with me on LinkedIn. I seem to be the only Catherine McCord on there. <laughs> so I'm not hard to find. I'm not kidding. I seem to be the only one. So uh, at least in the United States. <laughs> so feel free to connect with me, message me directly. I always respond very, very promptly, except today I'm traveling right after this. But other than that, very, very quickly. Um, so then we have compensation. This is one of my favorite topics. Okay. So first of all, I had a jarring experience a while back. I moved from Texas to Florida. That part wasn't jarring, but I got, so I grew up in Texas where they have the best payday law in the country. There's us and a few others that have just spectacular pay. Actually, I think Jersey does too. I'm pretty sure Jersey is one of those that has, it's either, I know New York does, but I want to say Jersey does too. But anyway, payday law, if you don't know, is exactly that 
it, it's exactly what it sounds like. It regulates everything pay. So when you get paid, how you get paid, what happens if, you know, payroll has a glitch and all it just, it specifically lays everything out. Right. So I moved to Florida and I'm doing some work for a big security company down in Miami, um, which is a whole other fun experience. And one day I realized that there are a lot of guards standing in line and I go ask, Hey guys, what's going on? What's wrong? Everybody was very upset. And they said, pay didn't come again. And I said, what do you, what do you mean? Pay didn't come again. And they, I find out that what's happening is the company will go weeks, sometimes even a month without paying their people. Now keep in mind, this is a national organization. Okay. Turn into a whole hoopla, but basically I go, wait a minute, nah, -uh, payday law. I go and look, Florida has zero payday law. Doesn't even exist. Not even a little bit. So in New Jersey, you had mentioned that uh, maybe Texas and New Jersey are similar or identical to that pay law. Can you combine New Jersey paid sick leave with your PTO? I know that's mentioned in the handout, but I wasn't sure how that works. It, Jersey, okay, so every state has some weird mm -hmm. guidelines yes. about that. I will tell you, I am in Jersey, I don't know the answer to that question if you can combine them. I honestly don't. So that's every single state is different with that kind okay. of thing. Yeah, so they I are. always, I, yeah, I, whenever I have to work a role in a state, and, and by the way, it changes constantly, it can literally change year to year. So the last time I worked a role in Jersey, which was a year ago, yes, you could. Okay. But I don't hold me to that. Please double check me on that. As of a year ago, yes, or so, um, I believe it was a year ago. It might have been a little further back. But yeah, you could double check me on that, though. Let um, me ask you this, Catherine. I know that you had mentioned some resources at the end of your handout, and SHRM mm -hmm. was one of them. Do, would they be able to go to the SHRM site? Oh, yes, right absolutely. Yes. So SHRM, um, SHRM has. <laughs> I don't know exactly where it is on site, but yeah, SHRM has all kinds of great resources. And also if you can't find it there, they have like a place where you can go ask experts and ask other people in the state. Definitely do that. Definitely check that out. You always want to have a good local resource for that kind of thing. Um, and by the way, I always prefer to keep it together when you can just make it one simple oh, process yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's just, otherwise so it's easier. just too complicated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so with compensation, so basically the way it was in Florida, and there are still uh, 17 other states like this, they're basically a company can just go a while and not pay you. And as long as they eventually pay you, then they're good. They're good. Yeah. And it's nonsense. So anyway, just that's so just so you're aware, there are states. So if you ever walk across state lines or something like that, or if you hire a remote person, Remember, you have to follow the payday law in their state, <laughs> okay? Yes. So, so if you hire, I mean, some of you might know that. Maybe you've hired a person from New York, even though you're in New Jersey, right? So you have to go by the laws in their state, not where you are. By the way, don't ever hire a contractor out of California. It is a pain in the tushy, okay? <laughs> do not do Good it. To know. Good to know. <laughs> California laws on these things are awful. Do not. They're do the gold it. standard, California. Yes. <laughs> not in this. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. We'll we'll leave any other opinions to be said, but not in this one for sure. They're a big pain for this one. You had um, mentioned compensation being in a tractor to those. Um, businesses yes. that are trying to hire. So that's so what we're compensation diving. Compensation is not the same across the board? In terms of what? Um, in terms of benefits and what they offer, even though your pay is, I don't know, $19 an hour here, $19 an hour in there, $19. An hour, it, obviously, they have a little bit of differences in health insurance, that kind of thing. What are other differences that you are mentioning? So... First, I want to start off with make sure when you're, so th this is my least favorite thing to hear is, oh, well, this is industry standard. So we'll just do that. No, now you need to consider industry standard. Okay. Always consider standard for the industry. Consider the general standard for the position. What can this person get paid if they're outside of my industry for the exact same work? Consider that as well. A lot of people miss that step. Um, consider 
And then you consider what is it worth to you and where is your budget? Okay. And look at your job description versus other ones, compare them, look and go, okay, we're asking less of this position so we can actually pay a little bit less, not a lot. Okay. Don't go way down, but you know, I can, we can pay a little bit less because it's a little bit less demanding of a job or, oh, crud, we are really asking a lot of this person. We're going to have to be well above industry standard on this. We're going to have, or what I call job standard, because that's actually what matters more than industry standard. Is the I know job that here standard. in Jersey, the, the pay rate, hourly wages have gone pretty much through the roof. Oh, that's every, uh, yeah, that's almost just everywhere. Trying to get employees in the door and working. And so our minimum and it's not, let me wage guess, it's of not 1150 working. has gone to, you know, we're looking at $15. So I'm getting that part too. So here's, <laughs> So here's the thing. So you, you figure this stuff out, then you have to, I just lost my train of thought. My brain I'm just sorry. completely stopped. You ever had that happen? Like your brain just goes, yes. Whoop, nope, not there right now. So, so you, you kind of, you check the market and all that kind of stuff. Right. So you want to make sure that first of all, you're also paying a livable wage in your area. For instance, I've had to educate people in my area and say, while your pay was perfectly reasonable two years ago before our market exploded because our real estate market, like we're just, we're going to be the next Fort Lauderdale at this rate. It's ridiculous. Um, now cost of living in two years has skyrocketed. So your pay needs to go up that same amount. You need to pay a livable wage. And so I explained to them that while two years ago, $13 an hour, if you had a roommate in a two bedroom condo and a low car payment and, you know, assume no credit card debt and all that, that was livable. Now it's at least 1550 and that's pushing it. Mm -hmm. I said, that's a big jump. Yeah. So, and that's just for livable. We're not talking about pleasant. We're just talking about, I can get by and pay my very, very, very right. basic expenses. Right. So make sure that it's a livable wage. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are skyrocketing their pay right now, trying to allure people. My guess is that that's still not working. That's what I'm seeing from a lot of people is that it's still not working. Um, I had a client who went $9 an hour over industry standard and offered a two grand signing bonus and still cannot get people in the door. It's not money right now, guys. Okay. Now make sure that you're paying well. Okay. Make sure it's, you know, try to be above livable wage too. That's just like the bare minimum. <laughs> okay. But really, oh, and by the way, um, look at when you're, when you're trying to calculate a livable wage in your area, don't just go based off of whatever Google says, put pen to paper, figure out what an actual cost of a place is there <laughs> and kind of make sure that what they're telling you is right. Um, and then check, you know, pay scale and things like that for the salary information as well, and kind of balance everything out. But it's not so much money. So compensation is very important. Okay. In terms of pay, the pay part of compensation is very important. That's why we all work. Right. Um, but you, you also have to have other things as well. PTO is huge right now, guys. I will tell you, I do a lot of podcasts and presentations. I'm on LinkedIn constantly, you know, just talking to people and figuring things out, listening to candidates, watching what candidates post, that kind of thing. PTO is huge. The, the week, the, the time of one week of PTO plus holidays is gone. All right. Let me just tell you that right now. Get it right on out of your head. It's not even a thing anymore. Um, you need to have good, good, P, good PTO. All right. And it's actually better for your people. I can give you a whole other speech on that. It's actually really great for your people. So make sure that your PTO is on point. You need to have some, you need to have good health benefits for your people and try to have some kind of unique stuff. Mental health benefits are also very huge right now. Huge, 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 huge. So make sure that there's options for mental health. If you want some ways to get that cheaply, reach out to me. I have a resource who can get you in touch with, you know, this here, this it's 25 bucks a session, you know, to provide resources to your people. Get things like Aflac in the door. By the way, you get a tax credit and it doesn't cost you anything as an organization. Bam. <laughs> and now you just offered even more benefits to your people. Stuff like that is huge. Um, benefits for pets are a new thing. So depending on your area, depending on your area, maybe that offering, you know, getting with a company and saying, hey, would you give us a group rate if we offer pet insurance? Um, have pets 
at the office at least once a week. That's huge right now as well. Um, but these things do not make up for pay. Okay. I want to make that real clear. Pay is still very, very important, but you have to have these other things as well. The, the creativity aspect of this guys is you just have to know your community. Remember when I was talking about being involved in your community and how that important that is, know what's important to your people. Know what's important to people in your area, what make, makes them tick. You're the person that you're trying to hire. Are they strictly logical? What's going to matter to them? Or is the person you're hiring maybe more empathetic because you're hiring a counselor or an HR person? What's going to matter more to somebody with that? You know, kind of do some research and kind of feel it out. People are in even more of an emotional state right now than normal, especially when it comes to hiring. So you're going to have to play more to their emotions than ever before. You're going to have to be more warm and fuzzy. You're going to have to be mommy and psychiatrist all in one. Trust me, especially if you're that's getting- a great point, Catherine, that you brought up is, is the benefit of branding and networking and volunteering you're, it, you're getting a double dip out of it because you are in the spotlight and you're yeah. doing good for your community, but at the same time, you're picking brains of people next to you so that you can go forward and yeah. plan uh, your hiring practices and plan what compensation benefits you're going to offer and plan uh, mm -hmm. your job description. All, all of those things are going to help you be a better Yes. And when you're, and when you're not having to do these things on the fly in a job search, the reason I keep emphasizing planning, when you're not having to focus on that nonsense while you're actually hiring, you're going to be better at hiring and you're going to be better at the candidate experience. And you're going to do all these things that people are demanding. And by the way, if you don't believe me, get on LinkedIn. If you're not good at this stuff, you will get publicly crucified for it. Trust me. <laughs> people are calling out companies specifically, they're leaving, you know, notes on, by the way, they can leave your reviews on Glassdoor and Indeed too, even though they're not employees, candidates can leave you reviews. So make sure that you're getting all this nonsense out of the way ahead of time so that then you can just dive in. With the job description, it's real easy. All right. Bullet points, first of all, do not write long paragraphs. Nobody's going to read that nonsense. Um, don't confuse requirements and responsibilities. Those are not interchangeable. <laughs> requirements are what you need, what they need to have in order to get the job. Responsibilities are what they're going to do once they get there. Okay. So separate those out. Always list the compensation. Always, at least the range. That's a big issue right now. A lot of people, in fact, I'll give you the exact number. 65%, 64.9 technically, okay, 64.9% of people will skip over your job description if it does not have compensation shown. Really? That's very interesting. Yep. Wow. So 64.9%. I got that off of Forbes, by the way, folks. So 64, and I believe it from every everybody I talk to, 64.9%. So you have that compensation on there. At the top, give the rah, rah, why you're awesome, get the emotionals, get the emotions going, you know, kind of get the, get the feels going a little bit. And then just the bullet points, real plain stuff and not 50 bullet points. Okay. There's not a job in the world that needs more than a dozen bullet points, either on either section on responsibilities or requirements. Never been a job that needs more than that. Trust me. I've hired everything under the sun. I swear 12 bullet points, max don't go more than that. Uh, highlight the things that are an absolute requirement no questions asked, got to have it. And then have all the other, in fact, I like to separate it when it's me, not my, my clients like it all in one section. I like to separate it and do, these are requirements. These are preferred kind of really give that distinction. But then you get to the fun part, right? The actual hiring. So you've got your job description, you're all planned out. You got your budget, you're set. You got your interview process already figured out. Do not figure that one out on the fly either folks have it lined up. Interview processes, for a non-management position, two steps, two, no mas, two. Management level, three is acceptable. Director and up can be four. Seven step processes are just stupid. I'm sorry, there's no other word. There, that's, that, there's never been, a, why? There is not a, a job in the world that needs a seven step, step process unless maybe you're the CEO of Chase Bank. Okay. 
not a thing. Don't do it. <laughs> so be concise, have your team ready to go. And you can have multi-step interviews. That's fine. Like, okay, in this interview, first, you're going to talk to this person, then this person, then this person. Fine. But just keep it all in one step. You will lose people. They're not going to stay with you through these long processes anymore. They get bored. They get other offers. And believe me, it's a candidate market right now. You will lose them. Don't do it. Um, if you have a manual labor job, hire them on the spot. If you have a sales job, hire them on the spot. Customer service, hire them on the spot. And I mean, not later that day, on the spot. Otherwise, you will lose them. Okay? Fact of life right now. That's just how it is. Is so, that before a background check and all Well, yeah. You don't, need to, you, don't need to, you don't need to have a background check to hire somebody. You have that before they start. <laughs> <laughs> get the background check. I mean, you give them all that. So you give them all that on the spot. You say, here it is. And of course, can offer, should, offer letters to say contingent upon the completion of the background check and all that. And then you just don't start them until it comes back. Okay. There you go. Poof, taken care of. Um, as you're hiring, we're going to talk about my favorite topic, which is diversity. So I have a lot of people cringe when I say diversity. That or they get super excited. It's always one of the two. Um, first of all, if you cringe when somebody says diversity, I'm going to shock you here and say that I understand. Because there's been a lot of misinformation. There's been a lot of controversy. There's been a lot of confusion when it comes to diversity. So I'm going to simplify it real quick. Okay. True diversity hiring is when... You have a global perspective, and it's not about targeting anything in particular. In fact, it's just the opposite. It's about seeking difference and seeking, going into a job hunt, excuse me, uh, excuse me, a candidate hunt, not a job hunt, a candidate hunt with a completely open mind and only looking to fill the problem that your company has. That's it. That's the mindset. True diversity hiring is when you are looking for the different. And I don't just mean race. I don't just mean gender. I don't just mean age, the EEOC stuff. Look for different types of personalities. Look for different backgrounds. Look for neurodiversity, which is ADHD, autism, bipolar disorder, all kinds of things. And get your biases right on out of your head. Because let me tell you, the neurodiverse crowd are some of the most genius human beings you can ever find. They can do all kinds of stuff. Trust me on this. Get out there and look for difference. When you go in to look for a candidate, the only thing you should be thinking is I need to fill this hole, this solve this problem. Can this person do it? Never picture who you want. That is counterproductive. Because then you've just X'd out 95% of the population. Don't do that. <laughs> just stop and think, I need to fill this hole. Let's see who we can find to do it. And when you look through resumes or profiles or whatever it is you've got going on, look for that. Go, you know what? I think this person can solve our problem. They don't have this title or they don't have this degree but look at everything that they've done. This person can solve my problem. I'm going to talk to them and go for it like that. That is the most productive way that you can hire. And believe me when I tell you that the best hires I have made over the years, the, the, the ones that my clients still years later, literally years later, will call me and thank me for. I still, I literally just the other day got an email for a placement I made three years ago. And it's somebody that they never would have spoken to had they not listened to me. Hiring is about people, not paper. Resumes need to be fired. They stink out loud. Everything about them is wrong. I know why we started with them, but all they do is create mental blocks. Oh, they don't have this title. I don't want them. Oh, I don't like this font. Oh, I don't like their name. I don't like their email. I don't like that they had a six month gap you know, three years ago, none of that matters. None of it. <laughs> look for how they communicate, look for what they can do. And remember, you're not hiring a resume writer. You're not even hiring an interview professional, unless they're HR. 
<laughs> or recruiting. <laughs> You're hiring them to do whatever job you're hiring them to do. Who cares if they're a bad interview? Who cares if they're bad at resume writing? What possible difference could that make? Especially if it's manual labor or something, guys. I mean, come on. That's just ridiculous. Remember that you're hiring a person. And look for that person that's going to just knock your socks off in some way, shape, or form. That something about them is just so unique and they bring something so different and have this whole unique perspective that's gonna help you. And here's why this matters. It's been proven multiple times over and there's a study by Boston Consulting Group that talks about this, that when you hire this way that I'm talking about with true diversity, that within about a year or so, your revenue will increase by about 20%. Your customer service ratings will skyrocket and you will have new innovation within your company. Because when you bring different people together that have the same goals, incredible stuff happens. That's how I designed my ATS. I got kind of the most pitch posh team <laughs> that you could ever find. And we've pushed this together and now we've been invited to speak and present at the largest technical convention in the world right off the bat, less than a year round. Before we had ever even sold the product, we were invited. And it's because of this team. I'm not tooting my horn here. This is my team. Okay. This is what it brings. So this is what matters. And when you hire that way, and when you advertise that way, it's incredible what happens. So to advertise and to spin things that way, make sure your job description matches that. Don't knock out 95% of the population with your job description. Have other people read it before you send it out and go, eh, I'd prefer it if it was like this. And people different from you, by the way, not your carbon copy. Like that doesn't help anybody, right? Have, have somebody different than you review it. Have two people different than you review it. Tell you what they would like to see change. Put that in there. And make sure that you're conveying your excitement about people and the job description. That will be very alluring. Getting people in the door. If you're doing local, have a little higher event, invite people in to come in and meet you, meet your team, have basically your own networking event and get people in the door that way. It's a great little trick, great little trick. Right now, like I said, it's all emotional, right? Great little trick that way. Um, get involved with a charity, do some stuff there, ask for recommendations. Hey, who do you know? What do you think about this? That type of thing. Get really creative. Don't just post a job. Get online and source. Get on LinkedIn. Get on Indeed. I, you'll have the study guide from me that gives you some of the tips of how to do that. Reach out to me directly. Active sourcing is key. Posting an ad, okay? You get out there and be active. Get out there, reach out to people. Hey, you have a fantastic profile. I'm really glad to meet you. Talk to them a little bit first. Don't just hit them up for a job. Talk to them a little bit and go, hey, by the way, if you ever would be interested in coming to work for me, I would love to talk to you. I think that Trust is me. key um, as far as you're, you're selling the company, you're selling mm -hmm. your product and you want them to apply. You want them in your company to work for you. So in essence, you're trying to sell. So mm -hmm. giving back those four times before you ask that one time, like you said, yep. in the very beginning <laughs> is huge. Yes. And that is a great way for you to remember how to do that as well. Mm -hmm. And, and when you're doing you have oh. in your I know that we're kind of no, no, you're good. time crunch here. You talk about onboarding. What does that mean? Uh, hiring? Everything. everything. Well, you said that on the last couple of bullets that we went through. Oh my god. No, this is this is what makes me laugh. I literally had a, a client recently that did not know he had to give people a start date. Wow. I'm not kidding. That's yeah, so I see somebody making a face. Like, I just seriously, honestly did not realize this. And had been in business for a long time. I'm like, well, this explains a lot. Um, so it's wow. it sounds silly, but when you welcome people the right way, it starts the relationship off. Think about when you're dating somebody, right? Hiring really is like dating people, okay? Um, and LinkedIn is your dating app in this case, right? So you want to get out there and you want to meet people and present yourself the best way. 
But if when you show up to the date, if you're on your phone, if you're not, if the guy's not pulling out your chair, whatever, whatever you're into, I don't know, whatever you're into, it's not going to work, right? So when the person starts, you need to be prepared for them. You need to have somebody there to greet them, to introduce them, show excitement, introduce them very publicly to the company, send out an email introducing them, invite people to come meet them, have a training set up for them, have their, have their computer and already guys, that's so tacky to have somebody show up to work and they don't have their computer set up and all that. Come on now. So get it together, have everything ready for them. If one thing's a little behind, that's okay. But for the most part, have it together, be ready for them, show excitement, take them to lunch or something and welcome them because it's just like your first date, not the interview. That's not the first date. That's the call on the phone before you got to the first date. The, the first day is the first date. I love how someone has said, hi, it's nice to meet you. Want to get married? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you would never do that on a date. So why would you do that on the first day of work? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just just be like, like just welcome, be excited. Yeah. Be a, I want to know you, you know, tell yes. me this and, and set up checkpoints with them. Don't yes. just then throw them to wolves, set up checkpoints yes. with them yes. and get to know them. Any questions okay. on how to find people right now real quick? Do we like have specific. any questions, guys, for those of you that are still hanging on? If, you, if your mouth isn't got a few. Of sandwich or yogurt or something. <laughs> I'm jealous. My stomach's starting to growl. So. <laughs> I, yeah, I crammed a sandwich before we got here. Um, but yeah, it's really, guys, it's the emotional aspect right now. Okay, so make sure that your pay is good and all that. But it's going to be the emotional aspect right now. That's what you've got to do. And the active sourcing. Look for people that are not desperate. They're actually better in the job process. They're less likely to, to ghost you and things like that because they're not in panic mode. Active sourcing, 100%. All right. And prep work because then you're not doing all that while you're trying to be a human being and interview people. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And that's why I love your outline that you did send because um, I sent that to all of our participants for today. So they Good. would have it as you were walking through what to do, yeah. what not to do. And you gave so much great information, Catherine, that I, I'm going to forget it. So thank God. I have, uh, <laughs> thank time. you. And, and I'm glad it was helpful. Somebody has commented that it was helpful. I'm so glad. Yes. Thank you. And again, guys, feel free to contact me directly. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Reach out to me. Talk to me. Set up a call with me. Um, anyone on here, I'm glad to talk to you. I'm glad to meet you. Um, help you out any way that I can. I do know some great resources in Jersey as well. So if you want to meet somebody, feel free to reach out. Great. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you kind of sharing all the information and the stories definitely helps identify what you're even talking about and the definition. So thank you thank so you. much. I appreciate right. it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Christine. And thank you for Bye. coming while you're sick. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> Have a good day, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.